All right, so this is part two of me talking about my life, starting from childhood, but just like sort of a brief history, especially to do with like being a theory and identifying with an animal and discovering theories in the first place, and furries, because I am both a furry and a theory, so. I like both communities, I like both concepts, so. Furry is a concept, but I identify mainly as a, a theory because it is a very serious and spiritual identification, identifying with an animal. It is serious. So it is more serious than just like being a furry, which is more sort of whimsical. And it's mainly to do with the art. So I'm going to move a moment because that guy's coming back again. And you might think it's weird that I'm still here for all time. So I'm just going to move because I'm sick of being interrupted, to be honest. So, let's see. So my childhood was pretty happy. Everything was great. I had my mum, I had my grandma and my granddad, and I had all my cousins who were my friends. And I had a few friends as well that were not related. Oh God. So I'd say it was a happy childhood, definitely. I had lots of fun. But it was after grandma died that things became less than happy. So when she it died immediately, it wasn't too bad for me because I still had, I guess, Halloween and Christmas to look forward to. But the, the following year, I guess things became more like sad and miserable. Like, I became more sad and miserable. I became sort of depressed. So that really sucked. So my grandma died when I was only 10 years old, which I think was too young for her to leave me. She was... I know it sounds horrible because I really loved my mum and everything and granddad, but I had a dad as well, but he was like more absent, if you will. I used to see him only once a week for a couple of hours every Wednesday from six o'clock to about eight o'clock and he used to take me to McDonald's and that sort of place and uh, I, I did love him to bits and everything but obviously he wasn't as much part of my life as the others grandma was my mum was like my main part of my life because I lived with her finally they've gone so I can put the camera back My grandma was like my big part of my life. But I used to own this, apparently when I was a kid, and I don't really remember this, but when I was a little kid, grandma used to visit us here at the house every week, every day, sorry, every day. Every day, and my mum would, would always make plans like for going out and stuff. Oh no, they're just packed there. Oh, seriously, fucking fuck. What are they doing anyway? Why are they just like loitering around, just like parking in different places? And that guy just keeps getting out of the car and going somewhere. When is he gonna be done already? This is so annoying. Look, he's going, he's going to the same place. Why didn't he just stay there? They've been parked there for ages and he just keeps going to the main road. But now they've just parked here on this street. So he was parked over there and now he's like parked here. And now he's going back over there again. He's been, he's already been there down there three times. He's going to the exact same place. Where is he even going? There yeah, is somebody else like there, but they've turned the engine off now. The engine was kept running before. What the hell is he doing? Strange person. Like I say, these people call me strange, seriously. Anyway. So when I was older, um, older child obviously when I was an older child I used to my, my grandma used to come here to pick me up at one o'clock every Saturday and um, we used to spend time between one and either four or five I can't really remember and that's when granddad used to come home and then a, like a bit, maybe an hour after that my mum came because she she was um, at the gym or wherever 
like during the day because I like to just be alone with grandma for the day and then at the evening granddad would come and then my mum after that and then grandma would cook dinner and we'd all have dinner together and then my mum and grandma would chat in the living room while me and granddad went to play in, in the, the bedroom their bedroom because that that was us having our alone time together where we'd play all sorts of fun games we had so much fun sometimes we would we would involve the other two so it would just like be a, a big game like of hide and seek or like we'd play the three the three bears game where where i would be uh goldilocks invading the bears house so yeah so we used to do that that was fun You might have run out of battery. I was trying to mock I think it might have. Yeah, it's gone off. That's why. It's probably run out of battery. Anyway. God. Definitely not the best place to make videos. <laughs> Up now. What are they doing? I hope that they are investigating and trying to find. They're looking down here. They're backed up and looking down here. The police van. It's a police van. Uh, maybe they're actually looking for me because they did say they were going to come and visit us, the police, to talk more about. Oh, no, they're backing up more on the main road. They're not allowed to do that, surely. But yeah, they're supposed to be coming and talking about the, the latest incidents that have been happening. Yeah, who are they? Those people. That boy's in his nightwear and dressing gown. So is a girl. Where do they get these nice dressing gowns from? They're like, really cool Victorian style. <laughs> oh my God, again? What the hell? What? Why is he doing? It's so weird. He's turning around, but on the main road, he's not even trying to, like, back up down a back street or anything. Like that's dangerous. I don't really think they own the streets and everything, but they're still gonna consider all the traffic. Oh, that's a black van. Is that a, like to do with the police as well, or is that just a black van? Just a random black van. It is. It could still cause an accident though with them doing that. Anyway, sorry, it's very distracting. I'm starting to feel sick with this mask on now. I wanna stop for a bit, but you know, uh, okay. So yeah, so that was that. So, so after grandma died, that was a big part of my world gone. She was like the main source of my happiness, excitement and all that. After grandma died, everything stopped. Me and my mum stopped going to, you know, places like going out as much because we used to go out and about to lots of different places we used to go like swimming every friday we used to go to a supermarket every monday and then on tuesday we went to jumping jacks which is like an indoor cl climbing frame place and we used to, we used to, used to just do like lots of fun stuff but that all stopped after grandma died for some reason so not only did I lose my grandma, who I love so much and was a big part of my life and a, a big source of my like fun and excitement and everything, but also everything else fun stopped as well, so that didn't help. So it took me a while to get over it, probably about a year or so. My, my uh, 11th birthday was very blah, we didn't do anything fun for that either. And I remember feeling strange, as I put it. But things didn't feel right. It didn't feel right. It was just like blah. But I think that maybe it would have helped if, we'd have done, if we had done something fun that day. Like gone out somewhere and then went for a meal at the night time, which we started doing after. So for my 12th birthday, I don't really know what happened, but I think we went out. I'm not really sure, but I know we went to um, a restaurant. An Italian restaurant for dinner. One more. 
just gonna wipe my eye and then my 13th birthday um we went to staley bridge i think and then and then we went for the italian meal at the same restaurant san remo's uh, afterwards but i remember feeling quite depressed though that day so but as much as I felt depressed looking back on it, it was actually a good time in my life, even though I sometimes felt depressed. Now, the reason why I felt depressed was when I was 12, I discovered I was trans male. I really strongly wanted to be a male when I was about 12. And the night before my 13th birthday, me and my mum had an argument about something. I don't know what, but she, she said, you are a girl. You have a girl private part. That's that you're a girl and that's that oh god gang of hooligans coming this way. Wow they've got curly hair, fluffy hair. Okay, I wanna show you, but I don't. They might be coming to look over the wall, so I've gotta be careful. I'll try and show you. There you go. Not all a gang of lads. Gosh, they've all got curly hair. I want to be in that gang. I love curly hair. I am obsessed with curly hair. Have been ever since I was a kid. That's another thing about me. You know, I always wanted curly hair and I begged my mum for a perm. When I learnt that, you know, you could change your hair from straight to curly, I begged my mum for a perm. And she got me that perm for my 10th birthday, which was the happiest birthday I had for a while. That was my last birthday with grandma, granddad and my mum, all as a family. I don't remember seeing my dad on that day at all. We didn't go to a restaurant that year. I had my perm. I had my nails done acrylically for the first time. And then we went to grandma and granddad's house, opened presents, had like a little bit of a party, had food there. And it was so like magical because I was a princess, you know, I was treated as a princess. Grandma had made me a princess dress. But before then I wore this, it was like a bridesmaid, gown a white bridesmaid gown with like flowers and roses all over the place it was so nice and pretty i felt silly going out like that by the way i remember being stared at by some kids and feeling super uncomfortable on my 10th birthday because my mum took me to the hairdressers in that dress and i felt silly i did i felt really super silly she told me we were going to um a place where i was going to be waited on hand and foot and i thought it was going to be like some kind of place like you know where you get to be the like the king or queen for the day like some kind of you know child's i don't know some kind of place where where you got treated as the king or whatever or queen for the day there's another person i'm gonna look in <laughs> let's just go <laughs> sorry guys <laughs> you guys are probably sick of this <laughs> I'm just gonna make the rest of the video over here. This is getting super annoying now, isn't it? I'll just walk around. <laughs> I like walking around. Um, let's see, what was I saying? I've forgotten what I was saying now. Hmm, I wonder. Nope, we've got plants in the way there. We've got plants in the way there. And of course we've got more distractions because it's a gate. But I'm just gonna place this on the bin and then I'm gonna go. Oh, you can see the damned house. No offense. Oh, okay, this is a good place. Now, the only problem with here is if anybody comes in the church area, which is there, where all those hooligans like to hang out. I like here because you can see more of me, but I'm still close enough that you guys can hear me. And I'm not having to go like this. So, sorry about this. Hopefully, it won't be too bad here. But I will do a different setup. I could always move one of the bins over there and do it like there lights better but it's a nice location the lights nice here you got this nice background you can see all of me which is better i like this i like this okay selfie so anyway so yeah great 10th birthday not so great 11th birthday 
But then when I was 12, I discovered I was male. I really wanted to be a male, like desperately wanted to be seen as male and treated as male. So whenever my mum used to um, treat me as a female, as in call me a female, like if I, if I heard her sort of talk to other people about me and calling me her daughter or calling me she or whatever, I used to get really super annoyed and I would like sulk for days, okay? So when I was 12, that's when I became an adult male German Shepherd. That was my sort of animal persona, if you will, before I discovered furries. So it wasn't a furry because I was being a normal German Shepherd that were hooked on all fours. So I virtually at the time was permanently on all fours because I wanted to permanently be that character. So I, I became Leonardo the male German Shepherd. Before that I was a swan, an adult male swan called um, Eduardo but then I became I became Leonardo okay and I created like a family for the character and everything and like a fantasy world surrounding this character so that character was like the king of that fantasy world which my mum kept calling La La Land so we decided to actually name it that so La La Land is a figure of speech to indicate when somebody is just being silly so they say oh such a body is living in La La Land like it's a fig figuratively the first time I heard it was when we were talking about I, like the, it was the Prime Minister or the government or something and I remember my mum and dad were talking about it and saying oh they're living in La La Land mm. so they used to say that like if someone was just being acting silly or not being very reasonable or whatever my mum used to say that or my dad used to say that and then she started saying that about me when she when we were having our as I used to call them crap ass conversations we used to always have them at night and they would last for hours and they would go on into the early hours of the morning, like two in the morning. And that's where my habit, I suppose, came from of staying up very late. Because my mum used to keep me up that late, having these crap ass conversations where she said I was living in a fantasy world. I was living in La La Land and I need to come into reality. She said it was OK to have this fantasy world and be this character, but I had to sometimes face reality and you know, deal with reality and stuff like that. Which, no, I didn't. I was a kid. I didn't have to do that. But my mum was very concerned. I think it was what you call the interventions, like, that people have with, with children, with, with autism and stuff like that. It was like an intervention to sort of, like, make them realise that, that reality and fantasy are two separate things. And it's like, I knew this. I wasn't delusional. But my mum used to say, that's not real. Like, my... So I had obviously like fantasy friends. I don't know if you call them imaginary friends because they weren't really imaginary, like they were real things. They were toys and pictures. Like I'd draw a character and then that character would be, not usually a friend actually, it would be like one of my servants or a family member. I, like I say, I drew family members for this character. So I did stuff like that. And uh, she used to, you know, like I say, in these conversations, Oh, for God's sake, shut up! She used to constant. <laughs> Sorry, it's getting on my nerves. <laughs> she used to constantly, like, keep reminding me that they were not real. That my picture friends slash family were not real. And that my fantasy life was not real. And I wasn't really a boy and all that shit. And that used to really upset me. That would depress me. And again, I would sulk sometimes for weeks after these crap ass conversations. It used to make me really sad. Like I wasn't delusional. I was okay. I was happy. I was really happy until she started saying stuff like that. So she just left me alone. I didn't have these crap ass conversations, which like I say, I think in her mind were these interventions where she was trying to make sure that I knew the difference between fantasy and reality. Which I did. I wasn't an idiot. I wasn't, I mean, I, yes, I was immersed in this fantasy life. But not to the point where I was delusional of thinking that that was real. Like, my fantasy life was real. That's what I wanted to be real. Everything in my fantasy life was the way I wanted it. So what I wanted at that age, and I still want this today, 
but I've not got it in real life. I thought that it was possible. Like people used to say anything was possible, didn't they? And that you could be whatever you wanted and you could do whatever you wanted to do and, and everything's possible, anything's possible. But I never used to really sort of believe them. Like unless you were in a position of power, like you were the son or daughter of someone in power, or you were smart enough to become someone in power, or it inherited a title like if you were nobility or royalty. I didn't think it was possible to be someone in power. So, you know, you had to be sort of royalty, you had to be nobility, you had to be prime minister, you had to be president, you know, you had to be a king. So you had to sort of inherit these, these things. That's what I used to believe. I thought that, so I couldn't be like in charge of anything because I didn't have this privilege. So I didn't think it was possible in real life. Now I realize it is possible for someone like me, an ordinary Joe, to gain a position of power. But I always wanted to be in a position of power when I was a kid. And I did use, that was one of my first professions that I wanted to be. Like they always ask children, what do you want to be when you grow up? I wanted to be prime minister. And of course my mum thwarted that hope. But yeah. So I thought you had to be like really smart to be in power. So I didn't think I was smart enough. But I suppose you can learn what you need to know in order to become prime minister or whatever. So yes. So again, it is possible. But whatever. Okay, it's becoming a really long video again. So stay tuned for part three. It's really, really long. It's like a series. Hope you will tune in for part three. More excitement to come.